As you watch this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Hey, I'm so glad you're with me. My name is Rick Renner, and today we're continuing the series called Christmas, The Rest of the Story. And as you can see on the screen behind me, today we're going to be seeing what happened on the day when Jesus was dedicated to the Lord in the temple in Jerusalem, two servants of God who both had a spirit of prophecy operating upon them came into the temple at that very moment and they begin to prophesy over Jesus. And that's what we're going to see today and see what we can learn from that example to know how we need to be prepared for the second coming of Jesus. But we're offering you my brand new series, which is called Christmas, the rest of the story. Have you ordered yours yet? Please order yours today. It's 15 parts. It comes in multiple formats. The subtitle says, Amazing Insights About Christmas That You've Never Heard Before. And my friends, there's a lot of insights in this series that I'm just sure you've never heard before, and it will thrill you when you hear it or see it. And this comes with a great study guide so that you can read all of it while you're seeing it or hearing it. We want you to have all the tools you need to really get this teaching down deep inside you. And we're also offering you right now my book by the same title, Christmas, The Rest of the Story. I worked two years on this book, not just me, but we hired an illustrator to take all of this story and to put it on paper so you can see it while you're reading about it. And every single page of this book is fully illustrated, full color. It is a feast for the eyes. When you see it, you're going to be amazed and say, wow, I had no idea this book would be that beautiful. It's so beautiful that I'm sure you need to order a couple because you're going to want to give one of these to your kids or to your grandkids or to a friend. But you can order all of these things by going online or by giving us a call. And I always tell you that if you need prayer, we want to pray for you. That is a major feature of our ministry. We really pray for people that reach out to us. And we have so many testimonies from people who said, I had no idea that when I called you, I'd be prayed for like that because the prayers are so powerful. And if you need somebody to pray with you, please reach out to us right now. You can call us or you can send an email and we're gonna release our faith for Jesus to really move in your life and he will. But I want you to watch this and then I'll be right back. In many cases, Christmas has become the battleground in the ongoing culture war. Christmas has become happy holidays and even the word Christmas has been canceled. In Rick Renner's timeless new book, Christmas, The Rest of the Story, Rick reminds us of the true reason for the season, the birth of Jesus. Through its detailed watercolor illustration, Christmas, The Rest of the Story invites you to explore the Christmas story as you interact with the story across nearly 300 decorated pages. With Rick's scholarly insight on the familiar story, you'll get a fresh, deep, and new understanding of the nativity story and the powerful message of the Gospels. The Christmas story is the most important story ever told. It is just miraculous. And with this wonderful, fully illustrated book, you will learn so much and you'll want to share it with others. When you call or go online right now to pre-order this book for just $35, you will receive the eternal story of Christmas, now beautifully told in this timeless keepsake. Bound in a landmark large format book, you can emphasize the true meaning of Christmas to your friends and family. This sweeping portrait of the Christmas story takes readers on an illuminating journey into that first holy night and ultimately the redemption story of God's love. Great as a gift or enhancing your own traditions, pre-order the book today, Christmas, the rest of the story for just $35. Call now or go to renner.org to order. Don't miss this special Christmas offer. Get your copy today. In the last program, we saw how Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to Jerusalem to the temple to dedicate 
him to the Lord. It was a once and for all dedication. And we are told in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, in the same way we need to present ourselves once and for all to the plans and purposes of God. But in the illustration behind me today, we see Mary and Joseph here. They're standing in the temple. When two significant characters come into the temple at one synchronized moment, both of them prophetic individuals who then begin to prophesy over Jesus. And these characters were named Simeon and Anna, two amazing people who were led by the Holy Spirit at one exact moment to come into the temple when Jesus was being dedicated as a baby. Both of them had long believed and prophetically forecasted that they would see the arrival of the Messiah before they left this world. And by studying the examples of Simeon and Anna and how they waited for the coming of the Lord, there's a lot for us to learn about what we need to do now as we're waiting for the coming of Jesus. But who was this Simeon? Again, when Joseph and Mary came into the temple to present Jesus to the Lord, Simeon came into the temple at that exact synchronized moment. And the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 2, verses 21 to verse 24. And behold, that word behold is really important because it means wow. Even Luke, when he was writing this, said, wow, it is amazing that this happened. He was really taken back because this Simeon was a very significant character. And behold, or wow, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And guess what? In Jerusalem, at that very time, history shows us there really was a man named Simeon who was revered for his theological and spiritual acuity. He was really respected as a great man of God, and it was generally believed that he operated under a spirit of prophecy. And because he was honored above so many people in the great Sanhedrin of that time, some regarded him to be the greatest leader of the great Sanhedrin. But he is an example of a celebrity type leader in the city of Jerusalem at that time. Everyone knew who he was and respected him for his spirituality and for his inklings that were so prophetic. And the Jewish leadership at the time of Jesus' birth generally accepted that this Simeon, this powerful celebrity-like theologian in Jerusalem was endued with a supernatural spirit of prophecy and had a unique God-given gift to discern the times. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 25, we're told that Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel or for the coming of the Messiah. Israel had been harassed. They had been occupied by Rome for a very long time. And the coming of the Messiah would be a consolation to them. And the spiritual leadership in Jerusalem was aware that Simeon had prophetically declared that God promised he would not see death until he had seen the Messiah with his own eyes. And when writing about this Simeon, Luke tells us in chapter 2, verse 25, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And again, this word behold carries the idea of bewilderment, shock, amazement, wonder. It was as if Luke said, wow, can you imagine it? And then he proceeds to give us the shocking events that occurred when this renowned Simeon came into the temple in Jerusalem on the day that Jesus was dedicated. But the Bible says Simeon was waiting, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And that word waiting is very important because it depicts a hope or an expectation. It tells us this Simeon had his faith engaged. In fact, it means to embrace, to gladly welcome, to fully and completely take something without reservation or hesitation. His faith was really engaged. He was reaching out by faith to hold the promises of God and to see them in manifestation. And he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. The word consolation describes comfort, encouragement, support, or even soulless. And again, Israel had been so occupied and harassed, they were waiting for some comfort. And they believed that when the Messiah came, it would change 
everything. And Simeon had engaged his faith that he would see the coming of the Messiah before he died. He was waiting for it. He was waiting for it. And we know that Simeon had a spirit of prophecy upon him because we read in Luke chapter 2, verse 25, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. That word upon means the Spirit of God rested on top of him and even the spiritual leadership in Jerusalem esteemed him due to his prophetic inklings. Simeon was a reliable prophetic voice and Luke confirms that Simeon indeed operated under a spirit of prophecy that operated upon his life. And Luke 2 verse 26 says, And it was revealed unto him, it was revealed unto Simeon by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Then in Luke chapter 2, verse 27, Luke continues to tell us, and he came by the Spirit into the temple. So here we see that Simeon was operating in the control of the Holy Spirit, and he was being supernaturally led by the Spirit to come into the temple at that precise moment that day. Then Luke 2, 27 to 29 tells us, and when his parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he, that is Simeon, took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. But notice he says he blessed God. I just want to say a word about this word blessed. In Greek, it means to bless, to speak good words, to praise or to celebrate and a blessing is always verbally expressed. If it's not verbally expressed, then it's not a blessing. A blessing is always verbally expressed. And now Simeon begins to verbally bless God and bless Jesus. And it must have really dumbfounded Joseph and Mary because they knew who this was. This was a celebrity in the city of Jerusalem who was revered for his prophetic anointing. Then in Luke chapter 2, verse 28 to 32, it says that Simeon said, For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Some people assume that Simeon was an old man because then he said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. But this verse does not say he was old. And in fact, we know from historical sources that he was not an old man at this time. It was simply the equivalent of him saying, you know, even if I died now, at this point in my life, it would be all right because I have seen what the Lord has promised. But there's nothing in this verse that states that he was old. But all of these events were so amazing that Luke chapter 2, verse 33 says, Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him or of Jesus by Simeon. The word marveled means to wonder, to be at a loss of words, and it indicates shock, amazement, and bewilderment. Imagine how shocked they must have been. Joseph and Mary were stunned that this famous and renowned prophetic individual was speaking such remarkable words over their newborn son. And now Joseph and Mary simply marveled in a speechless state that this legendary man was speaking such words over their newborn. And then suddenly something else happened. Another person entered the picture whose name was Anna. Anna entered the scene. You might ask, who is Anna? Well, we read about Anna in Luke chapter 2, verse 36, where the Bible says, And there was one Anna, a prophetess. It's another prophet. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, and she was of great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. So Luke tells us this Anna was a prophetess. So we see two people in this scene that have a prophetic anointing. In addition to the spirit of prophecy that operated upon Simeon, Anna was another prophetic individual through whom the spirit of prophecy was operating in the city of Jerusalem, and she was renowned for it. And Luke chapter 2 verse 37 says she, Anna, 
was a widow of about four score and four years. The text really is not clear as to whether she was that age or whether she had been a widow for that many years. But verse 37 goes on to say that she departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day, which means she lived a life of prayer and intercession. She prophetically stayed in touch with the Lord and prophetically had proclaimed the coming of the Messiah was near. And in a very similar fashion to Simeon, she prophetically forecasted that the Messiah would soon bring redemption, and he did. And the Bible says she departed not from the temple and it demonstrates her devotion to be near where the Messiah would be revealed. The original text literally means she did not step away from the temple grounds. She had her faith engaged. She was so expectant to see the Messiah that she didn't take one step away from the temple grounds lest she missed the moment when he would Appear. She stayed on site at all times for decades as she waited with fastings and prayers night and day with her faith engaged that she would see the Messiah with her own eyes. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 38, we are told, And she coming in in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. The Bible says in that instant, it really means in that very same hour and shows how she and Simeon were synchronized in the way that they were led by the Holy Spirit into the temple at that very moment. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 38, it says that rising up from her prophetic spirit, she spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. The word looked is the same word which we saw in Luke chapter 2, verse 25, to depict Simeon engaging his faith as he's waiting for the consolation of Israel. Now we see that Anna also embraced the revelation that God gave her about the coming Messiah. And when she saw Jesus, she immediately perceived, this is him, this is the Messiah. The Holy Spirit let both of them know that they would see the coming of the Messiah. They released their faith for it and they experienced precisely what the Holy Spirit had communicated to them. Wow. But what can we learn from them about how we need to be prepared for the next coming of the Lord? Well, first of all, we see that we need to engage our faith. We're going to see, it's receive exactly what we believe. And we need to engage our faith just like they did. They were believing they wouldn't die till they saw the Messiah. I'm believing I'm not going to leave this world till I see the rapture of the church. We have to engage our faith. But in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 through 4, Peter told us, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Notice at the first of this verse, Peter says, knowing this First, this is really important. Knowing this in the Greek tense would be knowing, 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 knowing. It means know this, know this, know this. Never forget this. The word first means as a first matter of priority. It's something about the last days Peter wants us to know and understand so that we'll be prepared for it. And then he adds what it is. That there shall come in the last days scoffers. Even the words shall come are so very important because in Greek there is an indication of something being widely released in the church, a new phenomena. There shall come, there shall be released just in the last days, scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? The word scoffers describes one who makes fun of another through mockery. It depicts those who disdain scorn and ridicule the word of God and mock those who believe that Jesus is coming again soon. And Peter warns that these scoffers are going to be released in the church in the end of the age and they're going to be saying, where is the promise of his coming? And in fact, if you read the entire text, they're going to say, oh, people have been saying Jesus is coming forever, but nothing has ever changed. So come on, do you really believe this? Where is the promise of his coming? And Peter says this is going to occur in the last days. The word last is a form of the Greek word 
eschatos. It's where we get eschatology, which is the study of end times or end things. But the word eschatos describes the very end of a thing. It was used to describe the very ultimate end of the earth. If you've gone here, you can go no further. It was used in a navigational sense to describe the last port. So if your ship has sailed to this port, there's not another port after this. It is the end. And in this verse, it depicts the very, very end of the age. And Peter says in the very end of the age, there will be a releasing of people who mock us, who still believe that Jesus is coming soon. But Jesus is not slow in returning. He's just patiently waiting for people to be saved. That's what Peter says in verses 8 and 9. But beloved... Be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but as long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that should all should come to repentance. I want you to notice that the word slack appears twice in these verses and both times it is a Greek word that describes something that is tardy, slow, delayed, or late in time. And the Holy Spirit uses this word twice to affirm to us that God is not slow, God is not tardy, God is not delayed. He is right on time concerning His promise that He is going to send Jesus again. But God, Peter says, is long-suffering, which means... For the sake of those who still need to come to repentance, God is waiting. And the end will finally come when that last person repents and calls Jesus the Lord of his life. And in that very moment, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 to 17 says, The Lord himself in that moment shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I'm waiting for it. I've got my faith engaged for it. At Jesus' first coming, there were two in Jerusalem who really engaged their faith that they would see the coming of the Messiah was Simeon and Anna. They prophetically declared it, used their faith to believe for it, and they received it. And now we see in the very same way, we have to be tuned to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We have to live in anticipation of Jesus coming and engage our faith that we're going to see it with our own eyes and experience the rapture of the church. And my friends, a day really is coming soon when Jesus will gather his people who are anticipating his return. Jesus really is coming soon. Do you really know the story of Christmas? Is there more to the story about the birth of our Savior than what you've been told? In this series, Christmas, The Rest of the Story, Rick Renner dives deep into the parts of the Christmas story that most people have never heard. Rick says, I've studied this story for decades, and I found fabulous treasures no one ever shared with me. In this series, we explore the Bible, history, historical writings, and so much more, so we can really understand all the events that took place surrounding the birth of Jesus. Rick answers questions like, why did God choose Mary? Was Joseph really a carpenter? Why was Herod so troubled by Jesus' birth? Who were the Magi? And what was the estimated value of their gifts? This 15-part documentary type series is available in digital or physical format, starting at just $24. And, and we're excited to also offer you Rick's stunning new book, Christmas, The Rest of the Story, for a special new release price of $35. It's a book you'll want to share with friends and family at this time of the year. This hardcover, 300-page, fully illustrated book is a keepsake that friends and family will pass on to future generations. Don't miss this special offer, the series, Christmas, The Rest of the Story, and the beautiful book, Christmas, The Rest of the Story. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and today I am standing in the foyer of Rick Renner Ministries in Tulsa, Oklahoma and I just wish I could pick you up and bring you here 
to see all the wonderful ministry that is happening in this facility where we receive thousands and thousands of phone calls from people just like you to reach out to us for prayer and for teaching they can trust. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. And we know that's our job. Our job is to feed many. And I wanna say thank you to you for everything you've helped us do with your giving. You helped us construct our studio, purchase this building. And now in phase three of our ministry expansion program, we're wanting to pay this facility off so we can liberate all that money to take the teaching of the Bible around the world on additional channels and venues. And by being a part of our giving team, you can really help us make this happen. If you're not already a part of our giving team, please pray about joining us. And together we can join hands and through teaching of the Bible and by ministering to people that reach out to us and by sending teaching products around the world, we can really change people's lives. And it's amazing to me that today it's never been easier to make an impact in somebody else's life right from where you are. So thank you for praying about being a part of our giving team. And the moment you join, I want you to really expect the power of God to show up in your life. My friends, I want to tell you, Jesus really is coming again. He came the first time and there were two in Jerusalem who had engaged their faith that they would see his coming. I'm engaging my faith. Are you engaging yours? That we'll see the rapture of the church. Let's be like Simeon and Anna. But tomorrow, we're going to see who was Herod the Great and what is the relevance of Herod the Great to the story of Jesus. You're going to be amazed at what you're going to learn about Herod the Great in tomorrow's program. But we're offering you the full series, 15 parts, which is called Christmas, the rest of the story. Amazing insights about Christmas you've never heard before. And it comes with a wonderful study guide. And we're also offering you my book by the same name, Christmas, the rest of the story. The back of the book says there's more to this story than you've been told. And this book, nearly 300 pages, is fully illustrated, full color, you will just be amazed when you open this book and see what is inside this book, the illustrations, the beauty of it, and all the information. Christmas, the rest of the story. It's all here just for you. You can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call right now. And please, when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you because we're waiting to pray for you right now but put your hand on your heart and I want to pray for you and me right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to see the rapture of the church. Help us, Lord, to be like Simeon and Anna, that we would engage our faith and not be moved by the mockers in the last day who think we're silly because we believe in the rapture. Lord, we engage our faith that it's going to happen in our life, that we're going to see it with our own eyes and experience it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I'll see you tomorrow, but please remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there really is power. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This program was made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. If you enjoyed that teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.